Dearly beloved, in the Nicene Creed, which we say or sing on each feast day, we profess that we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. The Catholic part of this profession does not mean that we profess the Catholic Church but not the Orthodox or the Lutheran or the Methodist. All these divisions are well after the Council of Nicaea, which took place in 325. The Fathers could not have had those things in mind. What we profess is that the true Church, the one that Christ founded, is Catholic in its scope, a Greek word meaning universal. It is present in all times and all places, among all peoples and all generations. It is not a church for only the rich, or only for Americans, or only for the oppressed. It is a universal church, a church for all times and leading into eternity. Today's Feast of All Saints is related to this in that today we celebrate all the saints, those who have official feast days in the church's calendar and those who do not. In other words, we celebrate the Catholic nature of sanctity, its universality, the myriad ways in which Christ blesses us with his grace and makes us his saints. There are saints of all races and nationalities. There are saints in every country, every decade, even every year. There are saints from all parts of the earth. There are saints who rage, range in age from one day to 120. It's said that St. Romuald was 120 years old when he died. There are saints from all walks of life and all professions, even politicians and bishops. There are saints in the There are saints of all four temperaments, of all abilities and lack of abilities. As St. Bede says, the garlands of Mother Church lack neither the rose nor the lily. But we could add that every variety of flower is found in heaven, all different colors and different types, much like the flowers on the altar tonight. There are irises and orchids, tulips and marigolds, daffodils and daisies. However rare or however common, each type of soul is found in God's garden of the saints. Today's feast commemorates this truth by encouraging us to praise God for all the manifestations of sanctity throughout the ages, from the patriarchs such as Noah to the saints of our own day like Vaquita. The Church wants us to see how good God is and how generous He is with His graces and mercies, and so to rejoice not only in the saints who have feast days in the universal calendar, but also in the more obscure and lesser known saints in the saints who were purified by the fires of purgatory but now reign with Christ, in the saints who did not live heroic lives, but whom the Lord chose to take to himself at a tender age after baptism. What all these saints, known and unknown, have in common is the Beatitudes. That is why the Church proclaims them today in the Gospel, to teach us that the saints are not the strong ones, the ones far removed from us, but the ones who embrace the Beatitudes and who allow the Lord to make their weakness strong by opening themselves always to his grace. As St. Paul writes to the Corinthians, let me tell you of the greater gifts. So our mother, the church, says to us today, lift up your eyes to greater things, which are the Beatitudes. If you can do the things that are praised in the Beatitudes, then you too can be a saint. Can you be poor in spirit? For not only in possessions, but in ever-growing surrender to God. Can you be meek, not returning blow for blow, but doing good to those who harm you? Can you mourn, not as everyone does, but as Christians do, mourn for your sins and mourn for lost souls? Can you hunger and thirst, not after food and drink, again as everyone does, but after justice, justice towards God, justice towards the weak and the vulnerable. If you can do these things, then you too can be a saint, a flower in the garland of Mother Church, making her so beautiful that Christ says to her in the Song of Songs, Arise, make haste, my love, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. <coughs> For winter is now past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers have appeared in our land. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come. And what about the little ones of whom I spoke, the baptized babies and young children, whom the Lord 
takes to himself as the words of the Book of Wisdom say, His soul was pleasing to the Lord, therefore he took him quickly from the midst of wickedness. They are surely the clean of heart, whom baptismal innocence has never sullied by sin, who despite our grief for them in this life reign now with Christ, and rejoice at his choice of them, at the same time caring for those whom they have left behind. And then there are the greater gifts, the greater beatitudes, those who make peace between their enemies, those who suffer persecution, those who are insulted and spoken falsely of for our Lord's sake. These last beatitudes are well within our grasp. We who have done so little for the kingdom comparatively to all the saints, now can climb by God's mercy to the heights of sanctity by standing with our Lord, by standing with his church, by standing for the divine plan for the human being. We should not lament our state so much as thank God for his mercy, because he wishes to lead us to sanctity so quickly and so decisively. As St. Bean says again, when the struggle increases, so also increases the glory of those struggling. The greater the torments, the greater also are the rewards. Though our torments are principally psychological, they are real. And the battle that we fight every day is against many enemies, not just one, but many. But the greater the fight, the greater the glory, and also the greater the confidence that our Father has in us to do His will here on earth as it is in heaven. Because of this difficult fight that each of us has, the saints also reach out to us from heaven in great numbers, offering us their friendship, protection, and power. God gives them to us to watch over us for a time in our life or for a lifetime, but our gratitude and response to their favors should be until we die, continuously acknowledging each favor done to us, especially on their feast days, each sign of love that they extend to us from heaven. With friends on earth, we hope that our friendship will last unto eternity, but with the saints, we know that it will. And so we should not be negligent in making our responses to them. Lastly, may the body and blood of Christ, which he offers to us at every Mass, strengthen and encourage you, as it has every generation of saints. Holy Communion, more than anything else, makes us saints. By frequent and fervent reception, Christ our King sanctifies us, because wherever he dwells, holiness is found there, and wherever he dwells, Satan is put to flight. Communion transforms us because the Lord comes to live in us more and more fully until he lives in us entirely. As St. Paul says, not I live, but Christ lives in me. Our Lord once said to St. Augustine, I am the food of strong men. Grow, and you shall feed upon me. You shall not change me into you as you do with common food, but you shall be changed into me. May the Lord, in his mercy on this holy feast, change us tonight as we receive his body and blood, that we may grow a little bit closer to the kingdom of heaven and to the joys of the saints, which will last forever and ever.